Okay, so this ha this question has two parts, but let's start with this part. So an enzyme has Km of 1 times 10 to the negative 6 molar and a Vmax of this. It binds a competitive inhibitor with this constant for the inhibitor and then find the apparent Km value when there's um, this much concentration of inhibitor and then also find the maximum velocity that can be that can that could be seen when the competitor inhibitor was present. So let's look at um, the apparent Km value, right? The K, apparent Km formula. So this is just something you memorize, right? And the apparent Km formula is this. It's Km multiplied by 1 plus the inhibitor concentration divided by K, Ki, which is the constant for the inhibitor. Now, see that it's in brackets, right? That means that all of this has to go has to be done first, um, such as the multiplication and then the addition. Then you can multiply by Km. Okay, so uh, let's start. And um, we just fill out all the information we know, right? So let me just zoom out. Okay, so Km in the problem was 1 times 10 to the negative 6, as shown right here. This is the enzyme Km, so we would put that in right here, 1 times 10 to the negative 6. We leave the 1, right, that's just uh, part of the formula. Then the inhibitor concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 3, so we put that right there. And then finally, the constant for the inhibitor is right here, 1 times 10 to the negative 5. So Ki is the inhibitor con uh, constant, so we put that right there. Um, we multiply this through, and then we get 1.1 times 10 to the negative fourth is the apparent Km. So just to recap, you just uh, to solve this problem, you just memorize the apparent Km formula, which is this. Plug in all the information you found in the paragraph, and then you get your answer. Now the second part is also find the maximum velocity that could be seen when the competitor inhibitor was present. Now this, it's more conceptual. It's not actually a formula. But you just um, think about the effects of a competitive inhibitor. So the overall answer is just that for a competitive inhibitor, Vmax will stay constant. Uh, and so it'll be, the Vmax will be the same as the one given in the formula. So um, I'm sorry, in the paragraph. So the Vmax is 1 times 10 to, 10 to the negative fourth. So it will remain the same. Now let me explain how. So... For a normal curve, right, for the normal um, enzyme, its activity is displayed like this, right? And then it reaches a Vmax. And then when you add the inhibitor, in the curve, it goes downward, right? So it goes downward. Km increases. However, it goes to the same Vmax. Now, why is that, right? So if you had your enzyme right here, um, your enzyme can bind uh, a substrate or an inhibitor. So if you have um, a lot of inhibitor, what will happen? Well, it will take uh, a longer time for the inhibitor to bind off uh, and then the substrate to replace it. So because of that, the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate will diminish. And that's why Km increases. However, Vmax stays the same because, for example, if we had 10 inhibitors, right, and then let's say 10 substrates, um, they'll keep fighting for this one spot, and that's why the affinity decreases. Um, but let's say we increase the substrate to 1 million, right? So there's only 10 inhibitors and 1 million substrates. Well, uh, as you increase in substrates, it approaches Vmax, right? The same Vmax as the original one. Why is that? Well, if there's a million of these substrates, they outnumber the inhibitor so much that it's almost like the inhibitor is not even there. So that's why it, uh, if you add in so much substrate, right, because here substrate's increasing, if you add in so much substrate, it overpowers the inhibitor, and it's basically like the inhibitor is not there, and that's why it can reach the same Vmax as if you didn't have an inhibitor. And that's why for, um, for a competitive inhibitor, Vmax will stay constant, and that's why it's the same as the one given in the paragraph. So you can just memorize it that the if you ever have a competitive inhibitor, Vmax will stay constant. Or you can think about it that if you have, let's say, a million substrates, right? So as you increase substrate concentration, if you have so many substrates, they can overpower the inhibitor um, to the point where it's almost not even there. 
um, and you you will have the same Vmax as if you had zero inhibitor. Now moving on to the second part of the question, it asks if the inhibitor was a classic non-competitive inhibitor, what would be the apparent KM if there was one times ten to the negative three moles of inhibitor? So for this one, it's also conceptual, even though it seems um, like it would require math. And you can memorize this. For example, for classic non-competitive inhibitors, KM stays the same, um, and apparent KM will also stay the same. Um, so um, remember that uh, KM and apparent KM are two different things. Um, KM is the original affinity. Apparent KM is after the in inhibitor is added. So that's the apparent KM. The true cam of the enzyme never changes, but the apparent cam does when you add an add an inhibitor. So the the apparent cam will remain the same, um, which will be one times ten to the negative six. So over here, um, it'll be it says that the enzyme cam is one times ten to the negative six. So it will remain the same when you add a non-competitive inhibitor. Now let's explain why. So for this graph, right, um, this is a typical non-competitive graph that they'll show you, and it shows that the KM is equal to the apparent KM, but it also shows that Vmax has decreased. Now let's ex let's show why. So you have your inhibitor, right, um, you, and you have your enzyme and your substrate. Now uh, for competitive inhibition, it binds to the active site. But for non-competitive, it binds to a site other than where the substrate binds. Now this does something, right? So when the, in, when the inhibitor binds to the enzyme uh, at a site different from the substrate, it changes the substrate binding spot so the, the substrate can no longer bind to it. Um, now what this does is it effectively makes this enzyme inactive, right? Because now suddenly the substrate can't bind anymore because this is a triangle and this is a... Um, Hemicircle, right? So, um, so that th therefore it can't bind anymore. So basically, KM is the measure of the affinity for the enzyme for its substrate, right? So how much does this enzyme like this substrate? How tightly will it bind to this substrate? However, this is only measured for the active enzyme, right? So this is an active enzyme um, because the substrate can bind to it. But when you add non-competitive inhibitors, right, when you add it to this enzyme, suddenly it, the shape changes, right, and now this substrate can't bind anymore. So you've effectively made it inactive. So the definition of KM is that KM can only me be measured for an active enzyme. So if we made this enzyme inactive by adding a non-competitive inhibitor, now we can't measure the KM anymore, and so... Therefore, it has no effect on the KM, right? Because since the inhibitor is bound to it, um, it's taken it, it's taken the enzyme out of action um, temporarily uh, until the inhibitor goes out. But uh, while it's still uh, bound to it, it's the enzyme is inactive. So therefore, the only KM we can still measure is the one that doesn't have the inhibitor bound, and the one that doesn't have the inhibitor bound it still has the original KM. And that's why the KM is the same as the apparent KM. This af uh, after the inhibitor has bound, this takes it out of uh, commission, and therefore we can o only measure the KM of the active enzyme. Because this is inactive, this is active, we can only measure the KM of the active, um, therefore the KM remains the same. However, since we have taken some of the enzymes out of commission, it reduces the total velo the max velocity, right? Because used to we could do this much because let's say we had ten enzymes, but after the in um, in in non-competitive inhibitor has bound to it, um, the ten enzymes let's say has become five. So if we have five, well the five can't produce as much as the ten, and that's why the V max has decreased. But since this is still active. Um, even though there's only five active enzymes, the individual active enzyme still has the same KM because the inactive enzyme does not get included when KM is measured. So I hope that made sense to you. Um, uh, and that's why the apparent KM will be the same as in the original question, right? So that's why it will remain as 1 times 10 to the negative 6th. 
and I hope all of that helped, and thanks for watching.